Hi, Data Guy here. And today I want to talk to you about a topic that has become really prevalent in analytics. Um, and that is the idea of real time analytics pipelines and specifically a best practices and kind of optimization guide so you can make sure that you are designing the best quality, the best possible uh, streaming data analytics pipelines possible. Um, and the really the reason why this is an important topic and why I'm making this video is that real time analytics has shifted from, you know, something that's kind of a cool, nice to have feature to a critical customer, you know, competitive advantage in many industries. Um, you know, you have really seen the evolution of traditional analytics into uh, analytical, you know, machine learning. And then now with the really explosion of machine learning tools, the explosion of AI tools that allow you to run these analytics jobs and scale them and design more analytics jobs uh, a lot faster, real time analytics has become almost a standard um, in the analytics space. Um, and especially in areas, you know, like things like customer expectations, users are expecting immediate feedback, whether it's, you know, order tracking, financial transactions, identifying fraud, serving personalized recommendations to shoppers that are shopping on Amazon. You need to be able to serve real time responses to them, uh, real time machine learning responses. Uh, and that is under the purview of data analytics. Um, also being able to instantly react to, you know, operational changes, security threats, um, in areas like automation, AI, you know, having AI models that run in streaming or low latency mode, where every time a new user uh, interaction gets logged, that then gets brought into the uh, mach machine learning model. And those models are constantly being trained and learning from every single operation. And the cost of delay of having non-analytics pipe, non-real-time analytics pipelines, and instead relying on old-school batch processes, you know that can equate to millions of dollars in lost revenue or risk exposure. Um, you know by not being able to serve customers that immediate uh, recommendation and capture them, you know right when they're on the site, uh, or allowing that fraud to actually go on for the day. You know that person can make off with millions of dollars before it's actually identified if you know that fraud detection process was only run once at night. So that's where we're going to go in today is kind of why, you know, and real-time analytics has become more important. I'll give you some principles for designing and optimizing real-time analytics pipelines, um, building them, um, and then we'll talk about some common optimization patterns and services that you might want to think about using in your own time uh, analytics pipelines. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first, you know, the piece of advice I have for you as you're designing real-time analytics pipelines is adopt an event-driven architecture. Um, really, you want to focus on having a push-driven system, not a polling-driven system where you have event-based systems like Apache Kafka or Pulsar that will push data as soon as it's available. So you don't have to rely on agents that sit in a, you know, different systems and are constantly being or having to constantly pull to external systems to collect data around them. Um, it's costly and it's inefficient because then you know that polling interval introduces lag time versus if you're pushing data as soon as it's available, it's available immediately. Um, also, design your applications to emit state changes as immutable events so that you have those events available as uh, you know, immutable events that you can then use to trigger downstream actions, right? So make sure you have endpoints that you, know, you, you can have monitored or that get data, data gets pushed from into uh, you know, your Kafka system as a producer. Uh, and then you know, Kafka takes care of it as a broker and pushes it back to you know, your backend analytics processes. Um, and really, you're going to want to prefer stream first design where the initial uh, piece of data, you know, the initial data points are collected immediately as they're presented. Uh, even if, you know, there's some downstream batching later, you want to collect that raw data as soon as it's available. So the next thing you're going to want to think about doing is using message queues to decouple producers and consumers. Um, instead of just having, you know, components tightly linked and directly linked together, introduce a buffer. Um, this is a thing like a Kafka topic, a Pulsar topic, a Redis stream that can absorb those traffic spikes that overwhelming consumers. You have, think of it almost as a load balancer for your Purdue, between your producers and your consumers. Um, then you're going to want to partition those queues um, you know, strategically with access patterns to enable parallelism so you can actually have multiple queues that can monitor you know, a set of sources uh, and then route that traffic accordingly to the backend consumers. Um, 
Another tip here is, you know, set up some dedicated topics for different event types uh, to reduce consumer complexity. So, you know, one topic for all errors, one topic for all informational, just kind of status updates. So those are e easily segmented for, you know, if you run in any issues or if you need to go back uh, and look at the raw data yourself. Really useful tools uh, to just segment that data and have it really easily readable and accessible by any downstream sources or users. So the next thing you're going to want to design for, the next kind of design principle, is to really minimize processing latency whenever possible. Um, you know, pro keeping processing stateless is a great way to achieve this um, because stateless transformations scale better. You, know, you can just constantly use something like AWS Glue, and that's going to be almost infinitely scalable um, to add additional compute and add additional processing power there. Now, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to think about when designing your pipelines um, and kind of what tools you're gonna use is choose compact formats and tools to help prioritize efficient serialization and compression. Uh, you know, this is things like compact formats like Avro, Optimized JSON, Protobuf, um, and also compression tools like Snappy or LZ4, or Z standard compression for high throughput scenarios. Um, this is just really to help reduce the load on your systems as it, you know, your files are moving through there. So when you're dealing with millions of individual files, uh, you don't get overloaded. You know, it, even though small compression benefits can really add up over time. Um, you know, one kind of quick tip there is, you know, if you typical format you might want to see is, you know, combining Avro serialization with Kafka and snappy compression for you know, real-time architectures. That's a pattern that's seen a lot um, within the industry as well. So one potential way you might want to implement that. Now, the next thing you want to think about um, is what stream processing framework you're going to use. Uh, there are tools like Flink, there's Kafka, there's Spark Structured Streaming. streaming um, and I have videos going really in depth on this topic, um, but just high level, you're gonna want to choose, you know, the stream processing tool that's right for you. Something like Flink is a true complex event stream processing tool. Each data point gets, you know, produced and then processed exactly once. Um, you know, things like real-time joins, uh, it's really good for, you know, very specific uh, individual transformations versus spark structured streaming is ideal for more kind of micro batch processing and, and large data transformations on a you know, micro batch scale rather than true streaming because um, Spark isn't really true streaming. Um, and you know, match your framework capabilities to use case ca uh, complexity, right? You, know, you don't need to use something like Flink for monitoring and transforming a single uh, data set. That's just way too much overhead. That's something where you want to think about thousands of endpoints and you know, lots and lots of data where you need that parallelization power. Um, choose the right stream processing framework for the particular job that you're going to be using it for that you're trying to achieve. Now, the next thing to keep in mind when you're designing real-time uh, streaming or pipelines uh, is designing for resilience and exactly once processing. Um, you've gone, you're going to want to make sure you're enabling item potency where you can ensure that reprocessing an event multiple times does not corrupt system state. Uh, it has unique identifiers to process it in the same way based on its time. Um, also, implementing things like checkpointing, uh, having saved progress so that systems can recover after crashes without data loss. So even if there is some kind of failure, uh, you don't lose all of your historical data. Uh, and also, implement things like dead letter queues, um, which will handle uh, you know, bad, poison, malform messages gracefully, uh, rather than just casting them off into the ether, because it is important to track those and understand what's happening, uh, where those are coming from, to identify you know, bad actors or other potential failures in your processes. Um, and in Kafka, there's actually tools for you know, enabling item potent producers and configuring uh, acts equals all for stronger delivery guarantees as well there. Now, the next thing you might want to consider, and you probably should, is to optimize data quality at ingestion. Um, you're going to want to make sure you're applying data validation at the start of your data pipeline so you can validate schemas early, you know, use things like Confluent or AWS Glue for schema registries for schema enforcement, um, and reject and quarantine bad data immediately, you know, things like data quality gates, uh, not just downstream. Um, you know, that number one saves you money from having to process bad data, uh, but it also preserves that bad data in its initial state so you can understand more accurately uh, what caused it. Um, also, make sure you're testing pipelines with synthetic, synthetic data, um, you know, fake errors to make sure that these quality gates are, test, are catching potentially bad data as well. Um, and then lightweight stream validation tools like great expectations or soda 
are really easy to layer into your real-time pipelines to implement these kind of data quality gates without applying a ton of extra compute overhead and processing power. Now, next thing uh, you're going to want to think about is you know how to handle schema evolution. Um, this is crucial for streaming pipelines, uh, especially you know when you're dealing with semi-unstructured data or just fully unstructured data. Um, using backwards and forward, forward compatible schemas or you know schemas that are going to change over to account for schemas that are going to change over time can allow for changes without breaking the consumer producer consumer relationship. Um, and another thing you're going to want to think about is versioning your events. You know, track schema versions in metadata. Um, so as schemas change, you can, uh, you know, in conjunction with the checkpoints I mentioned earlier, uh, have checkpoints for certain schema version changes. So if there's a breaking change from a schema version change, you can roll back. Um, and you know, when you're evolving your schemas, favor adding new fields over removing or changing existing fields uh, if possible. There are a lot of use cases where that's not possible, but generally a good idea to preserve existing fields um, so that you can still have that historical data to go back and look in. Um, obviously it's preserved in snapshots, but also just you know for long-term use. Again, very much use case dependent. Um, that is really all the best practices I wanted to talk about today. Um, just kind of wanted to give some general guidelines on how you can design uh, real-time streaming analytics pipelines because it is such an important pattern in the industry today. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.